Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Acustats Video Productions is pleased to welcome you again to the 2017 Acustats Straight Pool Invitational. Thank you very much. Whenever we say make it happen, what we do is we assemble here in the Aramis Simonis Arena at Sandcastle Billiards in Edison, New Jersey to make things happen. We've done that 11 times. We're going to do it for a 12th time. We began the straight pool division a little earlier today. We've had two really close matches, and we expect it's going to continue that way. Six of the best players in the world have assembled here to play a double Make It Happen event. We've completed the eight ball. We want to congratulate Jason Shaw on now being a two-time Make It Happen champion. And as always is, the Make It Happen format, it's a round robin. They'll be playing 150-point games of straight pool with $1,000 to the winner. Once we complete the round robin play after 15 matches, the players with the two best one-loss records will compete in the championship match for the title and an additional $1,000. It's really great to be able to have the best players in the world showcasing their skills here for us in eight ball and straight pool. They're kind of two of our game's foundations, and it's uh, important that we're able to bring that to you. What's also important is to have the best equipment in the industry, and we've got that as well. Diamond Billiard Products has provided us a beautiful Pro-Am table, Simonis with 860 Tour Blue, and Aramith with the best pool balls in the business. So we thank those companies for their support of Accustats and of the Make It Happen series. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, you've been so kind and so gracious throughout the years supporting AccuStats and supporting the Make It Happen series. We, we, we just have to keep telling you that from the bottom of our hearts, we couldn't do this without each and every one of you viewing out there and who are great AccuStats Make It Happen family that comes here so nicely every year and supports us and sees it live in person. So thank you all very much. This is Make It Happen number 12, and for the 12th time, you've all made it happen. Thank you very much. All right, let's begin this evening's program. This will be match number three. From Pontefract, West Yorkshire in the United Kingdom, our player number one. He's a two-time Make It Happen champion. He's got an eight-ball championship in Make It Happen. He's also, also the Make It Happen All-Star Invitational champion. Back in 2008, he decided, oh, well, I'll try some straight pool here at Derby City. I've never really played it a lot, but I'll give it a try. He won the event in 2008, and I think we all know how he's proceeded in straight pool. He's got a high run of 294, sponsored by Rassen Tables, Predator, and Checchio, the newest member of the BCA Hall of Fame. Would you kindly welcome Dynamite Darren Appleton? His opponent is from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. He's a three-time AccuStats Make It Happen inv uh, Invitational Champion. He has two one-pocket titles and a ten-ball title. He's also a two-time World Pool Masters Champion. He's got a high run of 303. Sponsored by the USA Pool League and QTech. Please welcome the South Dakota kid, Shane Van Boning. All right, here we go. Please lag for the Blake prayers if you would. Your official timekeeper is Julie Ha. And now it's my pleasure to send it to the booth to our host, Double J, and to Hall of Famer, Danny DiLiberto. Take it away, guys. Well, thanks again, Kenny, and welcome everyone again to the 2017 Make It Happen Straight Pool Invitational. We're here in Edison, New Jersey. I'm Jeremy Jones with AccuStat Video Productions, joined by Hall of Famer, Danny DiLiberto. Well, Danny, we have a real treat right here with uh, Darren and Darren and Shane, and, I, and really, you could say there's in the last eight or ten years, no two players have won more titles uh, worldwide than these two, right? Well, you know how I feel about uh, Shane. I mean, I think he's the best player ever lived. And, of course, Darren, he's got the record in, in the World Straight Pool Tournament. He ran 200 from the beginning. 200 point games he ran it right out and i think i think darren's going to be more of the uh positional play a little more tactical like you might say puncher and boxer like you did earlier mm -hmm. okay this isn't going to bode very well for him the speed on the cue ball could have been a little better and the three didn't didn't really produce uh, didn't really get safe like he thought it might yeah he went too long off of the second rail He's looking at this 11-2 combination, and uh, 
I can kind of see it, but I'm not 100% it's dead, though. It looks dead from here. Does I'm it? right in line with all three of them. And you'll... you'll... I think he's got to shoot it. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, even if there's a gap there and he needs to throw it, you know as well as I do that you don't have to have him frozen to throw him a little I bit. I don't think it's going to throw. Okay. What's this? He made two balls. Does he have anything? Yeah, he's got a shot on the seven in the side. It's not easy. He's a little bit beside the nine, and he's got a sharp angle into that side pocket. But definitely not the start that Darren was looking for, giving Shane a, a shot right out of the get. Well, he did have the three, but I tell everybody, before you shoot a long shot, check the pile. Because the dead one is easier. <laughs> right. There's uh, multiple ways to hit it. Yep. And Kenny had talked about this is our third match in the uh, straight pool round robin stages. At noon today, Duel defeated Shaw in a rematch of our eight ball final from last night. And at 2.30, Dennis Okuyo with a win over Joshua Filler. So it's going to take a little bit of a couple days' work here before it really unfolds on who is the favorite to get to the finals on Saturday night. But uh, those first two matches definitely will play into it. Okay, can he get at the four right here to open these balls? Well, you don't need to open them, well, Jeremy. I, I don't mean to really break them out. No, I'm just you, talking about just to... You could pick around them and never have to hit another ball. And that's kind of what I meant. I didn't yeah. mean to really open, but I'm talking about if he moves the four, it kind of opens the ten up is what I meant. Yeah, well, he's got a break shot now. He's got two of them. Now it's a case of which one is easier to fall on. The 11 is sitting funny. Got to get rid of that 13 so the 11 will go. Yeah, and the 11, if you happen to fall pretty decent on it at the very end of the rack, it may it may be a decent ball to get on the 5, but it being near the side pocket and really not another ball to play easy position on it, I'm not so sure I'm going to look for that to get on the 5 to break the balls later in the rack. He's going to try to bump the five a hair? No. Okay. I thought he was trying to bump it in just a little better position, but. See all the balls? They go. Ten, nine, fifteen. They all got clear shots, so you don't have to hit another ball. All right. But wouldn't you like to get up and get at that 11 as soon as possible, unless you're going to no, use I'm it gonna late? No, I'm going to leave it to get to the five. You, you don't like it, it, but I, I think it's getting good. Okay, yeah. I was just trying to figure out which way he, which ball he would use to get to that 11 then. I guess it'll produce as the rack uh, right. he, develops. He's, he's got a lot of easy shots. So if you got easy shots, you're going to have easy position to the 11 eventually. If this was a duffer, I'd say no. But the 11, I bet you he falls on. And, and the five is a good right-hander's break shot. Yeah, I'm not sure what the real dilemma is here. Uh, I'm not either. Maybe he doesn't want to touch the 15, and the angle on the 10 is going into the 15 just a hair. Well, he don't. I, he could kill it and shoot the nine in the side and then have the 15. Well, he's okay. doing it a little differently. Yeah, he's just going to draw up for a real full on the one, the where he can stop and have the 15 or the 9, I think, anyways. Looks like the shot to me. Uh, Good. Get, yeah. I'm glad he went this way. He's got the 1. He'll get to the 11. He, he has to get it straight in, but he's got no problems with that. Yeah, when you got these choices like this... Uh, I mean, there is a funny place always on two balls where you can fall, but a lot of times, don't panic. You're usually going to be able to produce the angle pretty easily. Well, you know, over the years, he's got a ball like the 11 many times. Right. So this is not going to be a problem. Just get a little angle on the 9 like he's got right now. Uh, oh, he's going to have to go... Oh, he got a little out of line now. 
A little bit, but I like his thinking. If he would have just broadened the angle, he knows getting above the nine, it's real. It, it, it gives you a couple different ways to come around the table to get pretty good on the 11. He needs that Watch one to slow get down. Straight in. No, he's okay. Oh, that's going to bounce no, quite not. a bit. Yeah. Now he's funny. And now he's going to really have to show off, off some skills, either cutting this in and bring the cue ball backwards two angles or just straight across, uh, excuse me, not angles, two rails or straight across uh, two rails. I, th I like just, I think, sacrificing a little distance and drawing past the side and then back over, even though you, you're, you're going to be shooting the five from a little longer shot, but that's okay. And he's hung it. Nah. He got the cue ball in a decent spot. He had too much work to do on the 11. Yeah, he just overhit the nine, and that came from getting a little steep on the nine, don't you think, Danny? Yes. He did get too steep because he... He had to hit a lot of rails instead of going right to that path. Much easier to go to the 11 without hitting three rails. Now he's going to go two rails to the five. Yeah, he's got to dig on the cue ball a little bit. That speed looks okay. He may rest on the rail, which is going to make the shot a little it's tougher. bounce a little. Yeah, that's okay right there for a right-hander. It is. He's going to catch a lot of the rack right here. And then really he doesn't have to murder it. Uh, don't want to lose control on, on the shot on the five. Lose the accuracy by trying to add a, a bunch of unnecessary speed. You're right. And we're a little difference from the eight ball. We're playing with a 40-second shot clock here, and each player, each rack will have an extension. Big shot here, I think, for Darren, just opening this game. I know it's early, but... He doesn't have to pound it. He could hit it high and go into the side. He figures to have a ball behind the pile. Yeah. Really, yeah, nice, solid hit, and really could have come away a little Beautiful. better. No, he's okay. I mean, he'll cut the seven in, and he'll have the three or the eight for insurance. Yeah, he definitely wants to contact a little something to slow the cue ball down. Naturally, I don't think it's possible, but I'm looking right down the alley. If he hits it with a high ball, he could go towards that side pocket. So he's going to want to draw this a little. Uh-oh. The, the six covers the 11 up. This could be problems, Danny. Yeah, why did he shoot so hard? Yeah, he didn't really pinch the cue ball much with draw, did he? No, I thought he could have cinched it. He hit it way too hard. Now he's got a tough shot. Yeah, he's got a, he's the got combination a, is the easiest it looks like. He's still got to cut the six a bit. And one good thing is he's, he's got plenty of insurance on on this shot here as far as he'll just come off the rail and back out to the center of the table, either getting the 10, the 8, the 15. And he's got a big pocket here with the 11. you got to shoot it. It's a little off angle, the combination, though. Oh, it's all right. Uh, there's no problem there. Got a big pocket. He'll make it. Now he needs to get rid of some of this congestion. Don't worry about re-breaking it. Like, uh, like, don't worry about the nine and the two and all that. That'll develop. Get rid of a little bit of the congestion without any issues. He's got plenty of angle here. He can shoot this and drop in between the three six. He could hold up for the four and the 14 and all that as well. He's playing a combination, I believe. Really? No, he's going forward oh, off okay. the 14, well, I think. No. He's just going to bump oh, that 9, I, I too, right? Oh, it Oh, it skid a little bit. Yeah. You can hear in. it. Yeah, you... it went in anyway. Better clean the ball. I think that's because he didn't have to cut the ball much, but you could hear the hop a little bit. There was just a little bit of a hesitation on the cue ball before it went forward. Got to shoot to one. Now, are you just satisfied with the 15 here as your break, Danny? It's a little low, but it's fine. Just fall on it the right way. And now he's put the nine in perfect position to play as a key ball before getting on that 15. If he could finish the rack with, like, the one and then just get full on the one and then have the nine in the side, that really, uh, that really shapes things up for the end of the rack. Just keep it simple here, right? Just knock this in, it knock the six in. Yeah. But, you know, you got to... Fall on that three and twelve. Well, he can do that. Is he trying to 
move the 15 up just a hair right here. It wouldn't hurt. Yeah, what a great shot. It is. What a great shot. And without much risk, that's what I like about it. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of an improvement. He didn't think he was ever going to knock it out of position, so. And Darren will play uh, the 4-12, get an angle on the 6 to come straight up the table and get real full on that 1. And that's that triangle that we were talking about earlier, Kenny and I, where it's just like a stop-stop to the break ball. Now here he may go two rails around the one. There's I nothing think so. wrong. You don't want to gamble hitting it going in. Go two rails. Get real full though. That's a little get under straight. hit there. Yep. Yeah. He he's didn't not, get straight. He can still draw in between uh, the balls, which I think he has to here now. I think he'll have to play the nine in the same pocket as the one. That or just draw in between. Oh, can he get forward? That forward seems like it's going towards the 15 with the cue ball. Okay, he beat it. Pretty good. Yeah. Now he can draw to the side rail and back out. He can go forward to the end rail, or he can float it in, whichever he he elects. Pretty solid, pretty solid shooting there uh, by Darren. And now to get a 15 to 13 lead. Well, just from his past record, you know he's the best straight pool player in this group. At least I think so. Yeah, well, he's definitely the most proven one. We've heard some things about Joshua Filler, uh, uh, but I, I think still, though, Joshua's probably had some really big runs and a lot of them, but as far as just being a little more solid through the rack, I'd have to agree with you, Danny. Yeah. Well, I know Corey. Corey plays the game well also, so... And as far as a 150-point game, it's just percentage points where you might consider one of these guys a favorite over the other. It's not like they're having to play. Uh oh It's an opo. You're right. Uh, just overcut the ball a little bit. That's why he caught the rack on that uh, where he did to slide down towards that corner. I think if he hit the ball a little more towards the pocket, it wouldn't have fallen so much. And one thing that uh, I think bodes well for, for Darren's straight pool game, eight ball game, just pool period, is he never seems like he's in a panic. No, he's very calm. Yeah, he's a cool, collected customer, that's for sure. He was thinking of shooting the five. He's doing it. Is he going to go into the pile? Well, he feels like with the four being there and the way he's going to open them that it's hard to not get a shot. And now, that one did it was covered up in the side by the 13, so good he did you know, he did get a shot on the eight. And the nine. He had the nine also if he had to. And really from here, the, Danny's call is he doesn't really have to move anything anymore. Once he no. moves, removes the four, the six will go. Well, the 14 goes. I, I got to shoot the nine right now. And you got, you have a, uh, I was looking at the 14 as maybe my break ball. I think he needs to get the four out. That'll open up a lot of avenues towards yeah. that six. But when he shoots the nine, he'll have the three if he gets the four out of the way. There goes the four. He'll take a care of the seven after that. Probably, like Danny said, get gain in position on the uh, nine. No Gotta re get rid of that nine. Yeah, no reason to leave that there. Well, he can shoot the two and get closer to the nine. And then when he shoots the six, he really doesn't want to have to run into the 12 and let the 12 go into the th three and the 14. Right. You don't want to hit any balls now. They're all open. you got a path to the break shot. 
So you should see him draw out of this, I think. And again, that nine's still there, so I'm, I agree with Danny. I don't, it's not doing, doing, doing him any good, so. See, I don't know why he hit those balls. He made it a little tougher. But you got to get rid of that nine. Yeah, if he wanted to shoot the nine now, that's okay. He can come across on the 12, dropping down and taking care of the three. Then he could shoot the seven and use the one to get on the 14. So really, I think the nine's okay, even though it's a little tougher shot and you really don't want to play missable shots too often. But that's not really much of a missable shot at this caliber, I don't think. Well, if anything, the control's not real good off it. Now it is. You got a little fuller. A little closer. Yeah. So he can come across now for the 12, if need be. I don't like using the th leaving the 3 and the 14 uh, for each other to, to get on the break ball, meaning the way they're sitting, it's not that great. And so go ahead and take the 12 away, knock the 3 away. That'll give you a nice angle on the 7 to just get to a little past the middle of the table for the 14. Again, the main, one of the main things here in situations like this is stay off the rail. You can really cheat. Uh, okay. He decided he's going to use one of those balls last. Now, one good thing about that, it does give you some choices, but there is a funny spot uh, you can get to where it's... Right. You don't want to get where you got to hit the ball. Right. He got to the three. I think you shoot the three and go two rails to the 14. Well, they're both playable as a break ball, so if he's feeling a little nervy about the three, well, he could shoot the 14 and draw out of it, but no. I like I yeah. like this. This yeah. is natural. You don't have to hit it hard. The path of the cue ball is never going to let you get straight in. Beautiful. And you got to believe Darren's off to the start he wanted as far as when he's gotten to shoot. No mistakes, really. He's going to be in the BCA Hall of Fame in a couple of weeks. That's got to make him feel good. Oh, yeah. And we we know he's in, and we certainly know that uh, his opponent this match oh. is going to a future, a definite first-time ballot no, Hall of Fame. No oh, my goodness. It. Wow. Did you see that? He missed the break ball. Missed it badly. Yeah, and he's left nothing but a long shot on the two or the three, I believe. But Shane is so happy to get a shot that that won't be tough. No, and that's one of his uh, strong suits as well, is burying the long one. Doesn't have anything to do with it. Just stick it. Pop it in and stop right there. Nice shot. The balls are well open enough. He, if he wants to go ahead and take the three away, that's okay. That, I best. would shoot the three right now anyway. Right. But I think that's right. the rest of the balls all pass. Just fall on where they go, and it'll look like an easy rack. Don't have to hit anything anymore. And that's what I kind of look at whenever I'm thinking about the balls that are up table is are all mine down here, all the ones I really want to work with, are they fairly open enough to where I don't have many issues? And, well, and what is that three doing for me? Uh, not doing much. You're on it. You might as well, well go ahead and take it off. Well, he's doing a little different. I would shoot to 15. See, he's hitting balls again and could tie him up. I would have shot to 15, go to the 9, get rid of the 12. They all go somewhere, so just 
ball on where they go. Okay, he's made his decision already that he likes the seven or something else he may reproduce uh, as far as a break ball. Uh, if he knocks this one in, I'm saying. Oh, he's going to shoot the one, maybe go to the six. Or even the five. Good shot. I was going to say, I was wondering if this four passed, because I wouldn't want to wait on it too much longer. Going to the 15. Yeah, and then he's, I'm assuming he's going to shoot the nine and then the eight and then the 12 and come around the seven for the break shot, somewhat where he's at now with the cue ball. That's what it looks like. The angle on the nine's not an issue too much other than having an angle. You don't have to come back backwards here you can go on the other side of the eight is and that's just as just as good you don't have to flirt with getting over the seven or any of that he's playing pretty fast Main thing is here, don't under hit. You can't really go go all the way to straight in. Straight in's not really going to be an option the way the cue ball was coming two rails at that angle. So the under hit is the one that I would be a little bit afraid of. He got well, a little steep, huh? He got thinner than he wanted. You didn't have to. He is. This is missable. And you'll notice he's a little upset about it himself. He yeah. wanted to be a good six, five to six inches. Uh, to the right, if you're looking at the screen, if you're Shane to his left. Oh, this is way missable. Yep. Not only that, what happens with the pile? How right. hard do you have to shoot this to get a shot? Yeah, are you going into the bad side of the nine where you're going to catch the 10 coming out too, Danny, and maybe dive the cue ball towards that hole? I don't think he's hitting the nine. I wouldn't hit it that hard either. No, roll it. Good uh, shot. Yeah. That's why you don't want to hit it hard. Harder, he would have been on the end rail. Man, he's still got a tough opening shot here, either on the six or the four. Yeah. I don't know if the six has a full pocket. It doesn't have a full pocket. It's got a little bit of a room for air, meaning he could just barely hit the eight and still make it. But he could hit, if he hits the eight any kind of thick and with any speed, I don't think he'll make it, so... Look where the two and uh, the 13 go. Yeah, not good. You got to shoot the six. Just go over to the side. You got the five in the side. Oh, uh, this is a tricky shot here. I wouldn't put any extra on it here. Just pop it in, go to the side rail. You'll have a shot on the five ball. Well, I didn't what, like it. Well, that's what I meant. He could he could make it off the eight, but if he caught it thick at all, it was going to deflect and get to that side rail. I was worried about shooting that one, and I'm not even playing. Mm -hmm. The reason why he's looking at this eight, not only it's an easy starter, but can he get at breaking out the, the two and the 12? He's not going to mess with that. Well, eventually he's going to have to. He's got to be careful. I wouldn't mess with shooting the five and going into the 15-3 just because he'll notice the one 13-14. He could easily create more clusters doing that. Now, if he's just drawing his ball, that's okay. And I don't 
don't think you're going to see Darren miss any more ducks after that uh, that break shot he missed. He sort of tied up to ten and six. Yeah, the six does go in the in the corner by the fourteen. I'd like say he draws position on the nine at some time. It goes in the side as well. Now he could go into the three. Uh, he could go into them balls here now, but he doesn't have to do that either. But if he splits the three and six, a uh, mild, mild. Oh, he's going into those. Okay, nice shot. Got a break shot now. The yeah. Ten. Yeah, and the three does go once he removes the eleven. It does yeah. go in that same pocket. So yeah, he can go to it right now. But what are you going to do with the two and? The he must have been reading my mind. I was just about to say the two and the twelve. He's still got to get at that. He's got. He would love to get an angle on the six to go into him with the four being there. Like you know. What I, I mean? think he can go into him right now while the four is there. I but think he, he doesn't think so. I think he'll knock this three off, draw back a little bit on the six to go into him, and then having the four. I think. He can draw the cue ball back just a little bit. I'll tell you another thing he can do. He can shoot the six and hold on the angle to shoot the 15 in the lower right and go into him as well. This one here now, he wants to have some speed if he goes to the back rail and then into him. So doesn't want to get pinned. That turned out pretty nice. Did well, he get a perfect. shot? Did he get a shot on any Second three? He got the nine and the three. Yeah. I don't know. I might go ahead and sacrifice the nine here, Danny, and come across and play position on the three. Just because uh, I think the shots are about equally as tough. Maybe the nine's a hair tougher, but I know the position on the cue ball is going to be real nice here. And there's no question marks if I can just knock this one in. I can come across the table in between the 10 and 6. I hit it thick. He hit it thick. He's not playing real sharp. The best match he's played so far is the 8 ball yesterday. Well, he's got a shot at the 12. Can he brush the 2 and then shoot the 2 in the other corner? I think he can shoot the 12 and go forward brushing the 2 and... and like you said, just be pretty nice. He, I think he's going to play short position on them now. They both go in this corner, I believe. Mm -hmm. They have to for him to have done that. But he didn't get much angle, so... He may have to either shoot the two first now or draw back and, uh, on the 12. Missable. Sure is. He wanted to be able to brush them a little bit. Got to get by that point. That's always dangerous. That point is a lot bigger than it looks. <clears throat> okay, he must must be uh, fairly satisfied leaving the two there and shooting it. Okay, he could get to there. Okay. Now he knows he's going to catch the point, hold up right there, and still have the three ball. I think that's the plan. Yeah, it might be. He's hitting the point for sure. He's got to hit this with a little top inside, gathering three rails, side rail, end rail side rail to get pretty full on the six. Another thing, get off the rail. Well. Watch out. Okay. Well, now he's off angle, though, so he's going to either have to make a tough shot in the corner. I, I don't know if the 15 is playable. I don't think so. Tough shot in the corner or run the cue ball off playing it in the side. Hey, oh. You want an angle now on, on the 15 to go two rails to the 10. But he's going to have to go to the end rail, I believe. Oh, 
Oh, this is going to be good speed here. Man, real natural now, just having to put a middle right ball to come two rails around. An easy shot with the right angle. They don't want to come too tight he on it. Wants to be right where he is now with the cue ball. And he's going to get her out right about there. And a few mistakes by both players early. We've seen that in the eight ball, and then the most, most of the players had settled in. Draw off this pack go to the center of the table, or right, right. You gotta draw, gotta draw. You can't go forward. You might scratch. Gotta draw it. Yeah, I was gonna say it looked like he was loading up, and he might get to the end rail and back. But well, they Perfect. broke open nice. I'll tell you that. They did. Really, just get the run started from here. You're gonna figure it out. Don't do anything crazy. Don't have to re-break, just get to that second shot and staying off the rail. Careful, careful. Well, he's got the 10 anyway. Yeah, I think he can shoot the 10 and go into those balls a little bit. He's got the 15 for insurance. But he didn't play the insurance. Uh, he was trying to play the six and the two as insurance. Kind of really didn't get much on the opening either. Well, it looks like he likes the 12 and the 11 for the opposite corner later on. Not that big a deal, but I ease this one in. I don't want the six to get away from me too much. I might. Oh, it's not going anywhere. I might need it. Shoot the six right now and get rid of that seven and two. He's still got funny stuff here. He's going into the balls off the off the eight. Is he? Yeah. Should be okay here though. I'll tell you what, if he saves the five or the four for a break with the six right out there in the middle. Should be fairly easy to get a good break ball. Just work this one out. And he's just got to, he could easily play, try to get short side on the five or the four up long, knowing he's got the nine for insurance. Is he looking at the combination? I think he is. Yeah, he looked at it earlier. It was pretty dead. Got to get rid of the seven if you're shooting this. I don't want to leave that seven there. And I certainly wouldn't want to try and bump the four or five open. I tell you that with the 13 being there. I like playing the short position, uh, especially when I got all these other balls over there to, to guarantee that I'm not going to end up too bad if I don't like the where I get. Is he drawn to short side here? Or is he just... Okay. I think he's leaving the seven there too long. Can't shoot it now because it's missable. Yeah, he's going to try and get short shot position on the four or five right here, which I think he could have done a little while ago. And now again, that seven, and this rack would look a lot better if that seven was already gone. It should have been gone a while ago. Because the 11 is the ball you're going to go to yeah. from the 7. I'll tell you what he could do, but he's a little elevated. But uh, he could knock the 4 in. That would help things. But he's a missable shot. I think you just got to go ahead and use the 4 as your break. 
and take the five away right now. Yeah, you're right. I think the five, uh, then you chip the 15 in and come around and get on the seven real easily. And then you come down and work with the 13 nine to get on the to get on the four for a break. Well, he's looking at the nine. I want to see what he's going to do with that. Well, he's going to definitely go to the seven, I believe, from there. And what he's thinking is I can use the 15 to get on the backside. Oh. Well, see, now he's going to try and go to the backside, also having position on the 13 just in case. But it's a lot more cue ball movement, and it makes certain shots missable. If, say, he overhits this, he could get two rails on top of the four or five, and that could be problems. I thought he would get a little more full on the seven and then just use the 15 to get it to the back of the four or the five and then he could roll forward. Oh, he's doing this. He's got to be bumping him a little bit, right? I don't see why, but he did. It turned out about perfect, though, right. I'll tell you that. Now he can go 15, seven. Right. Then the four. And don't try and get underneath it. Yeah, get above the seven. You can do anything from above. If you get a little too far underneath or if you get a little a little straight, uh, you could have problems. Yeah, you don't want to get straight. Now you're better off shooting from that angle on the He's seven. He's got a perfect angle yeah. now. You can do a lot of things from there. You're not forced. Your hand isn't forced one way or another. Same kind of angle on the four now. Don't try and get perfect. Stay behind it, and then you can easily go to the rail. Perfect. Yeah, you can easily go to the rail and hold your ball for the for the cut on the five. Pretty nice overall. Yeah, the end result. You know, I don't really, I'm not crazy about how he got there, but he is there. Yeah, that incredible execution will overcome uh, a little bit of a uh, misdirection on the pattern, I guess you might call it. I think he's got to draw the ball again. Yeah, and this time the way it's sitting, I don't like him really letting it loose and trying to draw up and back. I think if he does that, he's really he's bringing the corner pocket into play. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Told you. Now he's dead froze on the end rail. Yeah, I don't care for that shot. No, that one there, I would have just tried to peel, get like four or five of them off the rack and go from there. Now he's got a missable seven. Yeah, and that's missable by anybody on the planet. It's not just uh, just because... You know, Shane's shooting. This this is a tester no matter who's shooting. Right. This is anybody on the planet, by the way. But it's still a tough shot. You don't need to play straight pool shooting tough shots. And then the, the way that looks, you most likely get a shot, but it's going back into those balls, and you never know. It was missable. Well, so far it's been a little slow, but eventually someone's going to explode and hit a, a big run. This is a good start for it. Yeah, and that one there, the seven ball that was shot by Shane, he'd tell you himself that that one wouldn't have gone on any of the tables, but this diamond table, we've seen it in the last couple of days, hanging some balls you'd think that might go deep shelves on these diamonds. The whole problem was how he hit the break shot and wound up that far away. Didn't have to do that. Yeah, what Danny's saying is you don't have to, you don't have to open the entire rack on the break shot. You just got to open enough to uh, to get a few out there and continue your run, and you'll figure out how to uh, reopen. You're right. And that's basically the same thing we've been saying all week. As far as when it, we've seen some mistakes, it's almost like they get in a hurry. Whether that be when they were playing eight ball a little bit when they were trying to address a problem or now playing the straight pool. Does he have the 11? I don't, I think the three's in the way, but he does have the 10 though. The 10 does go. 
He can come up and bump the 15 or one of those balls wouldn't be too bad. He was trying to produce another option on a break shot right there. That's why you saw him come from underneath. Cut it. Okay, nice shot. Again, you didn't have to hit a ball there. I don't like that kind of straight pull. The balls were all open. Still got to get across on that four and thirteen at some time, huh, Danny? Well, he might do something with the eight. No, look where he went. Now he's got the four. The 15, I think, is doable for a break shot, but I'm not in love with it. I'd like to try and produce a little better one than that. It's pretty close to the pile. Yeah, real close to the pile. better look at it. it looks like the 15 is actually in the rack so it's not doable is he going to draw on the 15 here now i think that's what he's looking at draw on the 15. If he's got the angle he could and you'll have yeah, good yeah shot. just like so he'll knock away the 11 to open up the three and the nine in the lower left and that's another thing about that nice little shot he just made the 15 was also in the way of the three and nine in the lower left so he did a couple things there you just get on the 13 now, right, Dan? Yeah, and then pull on the 8 to get rid of the 3 and 9. Right. And here is a... He could go forward for the corner, but I really like playing for the side on the... There's no really... As long as you don't overdraw, there's no real bad place to get. Uh, well, does he have an angle right now to pull on the 3 and 9? Maybe not. No, I like him bringing the cue ball back off the 13. I really do, and, and, and shooting the eight then. I know, he. I guess he could get a little funny doing it that way, but, yeah, I like, I think I like shooting a 13 now. He's going to have to cut the nine and run the cue ball if otherwise. I don't think he can fall real full on either the three or the nine. Or maybe the three goes. The three may, does, okay, yeah. okay. If sure the three goes, that makes a little bit of a difference for sure. Well, 13 is not a great ball to fall on the break shot with. I might have to go to it right now off the three. And then use the nine to get to the break. That's what it looks like. 13 is not in a good spot to fall on the 15. Well, he's shooting the nine now. Well, that really tells me he's probably going to the 13. Good idea. He could have did the same thing with the three. Yeah, but now he's a little straight, so he's going to have to shoot the three uh, from a little bit near the rail. Just needs to keep the angle to float back out just a little past the center of the, the center of the table. Oh, this is tough speed here. You know, it's not the, the perfect glance angle to go one rail. This is tricky. Did he hit it hard enough? Yep. He got past the rack. He doesn't have a lot of angle, though, so you won't see a lot of balls getting shaken loose on the break. But like you've been saying, don't need to break open the whole rack. It's right. not a nine ball. Two or three, four balls, that would be plenty usually, especially players this caliber. Look, it's a tie ball game. It's been a real pleasure being in here with Danny, and we're going to learn a lot from the straight pull here with him this week. But that man right there, he's going to join me later to, to do the next match at 930. And... Uh, 
be nice to hear some insight. You know, he's he's got an incredible mind for pool as well. Don't have, you can't change games like he did midway through his career and <laughs> become the champion at the pocket billiards like he has. Lassiter did it. Lassiter was a nine ball player. He got super on straight pool, but he had such finesse and control. He's gonna have to pound this because he's he drawing all have, the way back up table too. Yeah, he might scratch in that far corner. Might scratch. Nope. The English curbed it. But I don't think he's got a good shot. He's got a pretty easy row first on the six, but of course, anytime you got to go row first, it becomes a little bit missable. What I would I, worry. I don't care about the rail first. How does he get past the two, three, and twelve? He's looking at the rail first. Yeah. Doesn't have to turn out good. No, he could go right into the fourteen and bump the fourteen up a little bit and hold right there and end up kind of with no shot. So. I don't think he can scratch cross in between the 14 and 9 cross the corner on the rail first, but I don't see anything else he can really shoot. He could cut the 12, but the 6 is cutting off a little bit of the pocket. The way it's sitting up, too, don't don't put too much right. That's the key on this rail first. And a good touch there. Got the 14. Yeah, he's got the 9 as well, so we'll see which way he likes to go. And the five, see the five? The five sitting real nice to just open the rack a little bit more with a lot of insurance. Right. That's the main part, pal. You, you go into this little cluster, you got the 12 for insurance. You don't have to murder it. You don't. You Let's know, the, see he, you'll what he see does. The, the one and four and everything should open pretty easily. That's what he did, okay. But I like that he just massaged him a little bit. You know, a lot he, of times when you got a lot of helpers out there, He's got to shoot the three here because he's over the top shooting the 12. And I think he, he's going to look and see. Maybe he'll get at the seven clean uh, after Might. the 11. It's close. Yeah, I think it, it goes. He might let it out a little bit. And if it doesn't, he can draw right into the one with no problems at all, really. That's what he did. He saw he was probably going to get a shot on the seven, always having the two and most likely the four as well. So now's where he's got to start thinking about the break shot. Well, the 13 is a break shot, but it's going to be delicate falling on the rail. Yeah, and he's got plenty of options with the seven there and all that insurance. He can stop right there, shoot the eight, and just come up and bump the one or the ten into position with no problems. He could get full on this ten and push to one maybe into position. I was always taught that coming from that back rail delicately uh, kind of pushes the ball into a good spot a lot of times. There's the break shot. He's certainly not saving one of these low balls to go into the low part of the rack, is he? I don't think so. I don't think so. He made the one a break shot, and that's what he's going to use. Could have had used a little more angle on that 13 there. I think he would have liked to have come across a little more. But I think the 14 goes, too. And it goes in both pockets. Right. Darren, you could see he was visually upset about that pretty easy miss on that break. Well, this wasn't real good either. Well, he'd like to have gotten a little more out, but he's definitely going to use a low ball. Uh, I think the eight has to be the eight to break. Doesn't want to get much angle on this 12, that's for sure. Because he's going to want to get Perfect. real full on the 14, Perfect. yeah. And you'll notice, uh, again, I think Darren really, he's very aware that he doesn't have to have the entire rack open. Got look. good here. He's going to have a good angle on the eight. 
main thing is don't let up on it. You need to pinch it back a little bit. Just a hair. Perfect. And with him playing that, again, I realize, I think he realizes he doesn't have to open the rack a lot. Coming from underneath, he should get enough opening up on the left side of the table. Yeah, he's going to hit the pile and then go out to the side rail and come out to the middle. With high right? With right hand English. That's the way you hit this one. Kenny Schumann, our head referee, has done an incredible job again this week. Oh, he worked so hard, the guy. I really, I, I nominated him for the Hall of Fame. He belongs there. Now, he doesn't really want to catch a lot of the six. He's going to catch a little of the six, but he doesn't want to catch a ton of it. You want to catch it on an angle so you can go out and, and right in English bring you to the middle. Okay, he needs a cue ball to slow down. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. He's got a long one now. That's why I was thinking that he may just start from that angle, just stay a little bit more towards that left side rail, but he caught the rack a little heavy so he didn't get as much travel on the cue ball. And he's going to have to come with one here, Danny. Well, I got to look at the 14. Off the three? Yes. That's what I was just looking at. I was like, man, I know it's with a clean long one. You well, Corey think, would shoot that. Well, I'm saying if it's, if it's really there, it's there. I think know? it is. I'd rather shoot that than the one. <laughs> but how about you? Well, if, yeah, if it's if I feel like it's sitting there, I'm definitely shooting the 14 before I shoot the one. Now it looks like it's over kissing. You mean to the bottom rail, yeah. Great shot. Well, that's one thing he's got in his favor. He's such a great shot maker. Yeah, and I really think uh, that miss on that early break ball early earlier really woke him up a little bit. Uh, he, he seems to me he's pretty darn focused. Well, what does he have now, the seven? No, he's got a he's got most of the pocket on the four, so. Oh, he does? Yeah, and we'll see if he tries to hold to clear the nine or if he waits on that. That would do a lot for him. I think six goes too, but not right now. Well, that's why I was thinking if he had the angle to get over on the nine, he could do a lot of opening that, and uh, that would do a lot for the six and the 13 ball. Just going to bump the 11 here. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't really look at the rack because I didn't think he was going to go into it very hard. I thought he was just going to try and tickle one away and then have the seven there for insurance. I didn't really think he could get much opening, but he knew he was opening the 14, though, right, Danny? Yes. Yes. Made the nine a break shot. Got the three. And he'll just, he won't do anything crazy here, I don't think. I think he'll just make sure he gets a, to the left side of the 11. That way he comes off the five and not get pinned, just like that. Yeah, he looks like he's got control of things now. He certainly has the rhythm. And a totally different complexion uh, watching Darren play than maybe we've seen Orcullo earlier in filler. If you just watch the cue ball movement. He's trying to figure out how now I'm going to produce an, uh, the, uh, opening these balls without taking any chances. He could do it with the six. Yeah, and with that break ball already there, um, I, I think he can hit this with a little speed and not worry about things so much. Wow, that ball really drew. <laughs> now wow. he's tough again. Now, not tough. Super tough. Super tough. What do you shoot at, Dan Danny? He's got the 13, I believe. Yeah, it's tough. Does he have the 9? I think he wants to save the 13, and I think they're both equally tough, so I think he's probably going to roll the 9 in. Maybe not. Maybe the 13. He's got the 11 for a break, too, so. Oh, great shot. 
Great shot. Yeah, like I said, I think he's in rhythm now, and we're not going to see him miss. Might get safe somewhere, but he's not going to miss. Got good on the five. We'll see which kind of decision, what kind of decision he makes here as far as uh, which ball he really likes to lead before he breaks with the 13. I think he shoots the 5, 15, 7, and 10 to the break shot. Danny said 15, but he did mean the 11. 11, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. I'm colorblind. I just didn't want anybody out there thinking that. Where's the 15? Right. That they're colorblind. Okay, he's one, he's trying to figure out where on the ten do I want to get to shoot to seven and get on or opposite. Now where on the seven do I want to get to to fall on the ten to where I can easily slide over for a shot on the thirteen. Oh wow, I didn't ex I didn't see this coming and maybe. Okay, can he just hold right there? That's what he's gonna try to do. Or is he following up for a two railing on the 11 to, to come around the 13 like so? Perfect. Go Don't. right to the middle of the table now, two rails. Don't under hit it. That's the only real problem is the big under hit. Perfect. Yeah, pretty dialed in, huh, Danny? Yeah, he's ready to play. Yeah, now... Uh, Shane is ready to watch. <laughs> Now, yeah, straight pull out of all the pool games has got to be the electric chair that's the worst. It is. You have to sit sometimes an hour before you get another inning. The other games, you know you're not going to wait that long. Eight ball, nine ball, one pocket. Well, don't go to the end rail again. You don't have to. No, and I think he'll just draw out to the about where he's at now, right, Danny? Right. That's don't go a, all the way down. And it's funny, when you pick this out, this shot out, like, don't worry about the rack as much. I mean, you're worried. He did. Look at this. I don't like this. No. And he put English. I would have hit it with a straight low. I thought he could straight get a lot. Straight low, yeah. and he'd be closer. Now he's got to shoot the eight or the seven. And in a shot like that, we were talking about, a lot of times you can just play the cue ball right back to your position, and the rack should open in a decent way. He's going into the one. Oh, he's going by it, yeah. Okay, good shot. He's got the seven. That might be all he's got. No, he can hold right there in between there and you shoot the one with having an insurance on the nine to open the rack a little bit. So he'll kill this ball just a little bit, drag it in, and what I mean by drag is he'll t make the ball turn over and kind of kill. Perfect. Now he's got... You don't, hit, you don't hit this hard. The nine is your insurance ball. You know, it's not a nine ball rack. Just get a few more open and play position for the nine. Well, he got position on the nine, but it, it didn't turn out real good. Does no. he have the four? I think he does. He's he didn't have at to shoot that hard. Now, and you'll notice he's knocked another one upstairs, that being the six ball, which with the 15 being there, not as big a problem. Still got to produce a break shot, which will probably be the 11. If he can get to the five now, a little later on, he can open the three up and leave the 11 for the break. A lot of times people don't realize things because they can't imagine what the table looks like with a few balls gone, and that's really something you need to... Uh, get all the balls out. Right. Get rid of them, fall on the five in the end, and then go three rails or two rails from the three to the to 11. 11. But right now, you can get those balls out that are downstream. I also get the 10. Uh, the 10's doing nothing for me, just lonely over there on that side of the table. I, I don't see any reason to wait on the 10 ball at all. I mean, I want to get the ones upstairs as well. But that 10, uh, I don't think it's really doing much for you, huh, Danny? It's not, but it's not hurting you either. 
Well, it's definitely not as important as getting the ones, uh, that being the 6 and the 15, but... Well, he didn't get to the 15. And I think that's because of the 10. He left it there to, to get to... No, I think he should have got to the 15 right there. I like leaving the 5 to get to the 3 to get to the 11. He's gotten a little straight here, too, where... That's why you'll see him. He's paying real attention, uh, a lot of attention to how he gets on the three ball. Because he wants to be above it a little bit. But he doesn't want to have too much angle. And now he could do a lot to go and get that 15 and 10. And then he can easily drop down for the 12 and 14. And then produce the break shot on the 11. Uh, there you go. Go up and get the 15. You'll be able to get pretty close to the 10. You have both the side pocket and the uh, for the 14 and the 12 in the corner. So. Well, when you fall on the 12, you got to be careful you don't hit the 15. Very good. And he'll just ease this in with a little bit of left English to check the cue ball up. He's looking to see if the 14 goes, and I I understand that. He can get above it and then play them both, but don't don't worry about it. If, if it's tight, don't even mess with it. Just check the cue ball up. And it does go. Must have a full pocket, too, or else he wouldn't take any chance like that. Well, he wanted to get this angle so he doesn't have to hit the 12. No, no danger of that. Stay off the rail here. Don't get dead straight. No, he got perfect game okay. going, I believe. Yeah, he can go right off this 12 and fall on the 15. Yeah, he doesn't even have to involve in a rail. Just pinch the cue ball back a little bit. Perfect. And the way it's looking, it looks like to me Shane's going to need a bad roll to get back to the table. <laughs> yeah. This is one he could hit with follow from that angle. Right. He don't have to hit it hard either. He'll glance off the top ball. Oh, Whoa. look where he went. Watch out. Yeah, I think he's he did. He didn't get enough drive with the top English, if you ask me. He didn't. He didn't hit high. He hit center. Right. But now he's got the five, so there's no problem. But at any rate, like I said, he looks like he's got control and he's in rhythm. Well, he's got a great mind for pocket billiards and uh, a really solid cue ball and obviously great fundamentals on making the ball, so. You know why he's got that? Well, I'm sure. Because he couldn't play for the NBA. <laughs> Well, I think at one time he was trying to become a boxer as well. Uh, yeah, he fought a little bit. Yeah. Tough racket. Oh, yeah, tough racket. And I believe where he's from, there's lots of guys trying to do it. So uh, anytime there's more competition, you got to be a little bit more on it. I think Darren told me about that when I first met him, that he used to fight a little bit. I think he found his calling, though, don't you? Exactly. Oh, he's look what he he's done with his, with pool. He got notoriety. He got a little money. Um, yeah, a, a true competitor. He's won a bunch of titles in different different disciplines. And he moved to Allentown, Pennsylvania. Now, that's the home of another great player, Jim Rimpey. 
Isn't that right? Isn't it? No, he no, was it. from Scranton. Scranton, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Yeah, I thought you were going to talk about Ale by Ale. Oh, I don't know if I know him. Yeah, there's an old-time player named Ale by Ale. He was from Allentown. Ale by Ale. You think there's some stories there? Hmm. <laughs> Now, he may go up into these balls and just rub them a little bit. I Like I say, I don't think you have to go into them. You know, run the balls in the six wet. Well, he, I he didn't I, have to hit those. No, I think he was trying to hit the seven, though, and bump the six up he, for a break why? shot. He didn't have to. Well, what break ball are you using here, Danny? Well, he could do it later, but he didn't have to go into the balls right there. I mean, if he ran the one and the 12 and shot the six, he could have knocked the seven behind the pile for a break shot and had position on the nine, but that's passed. Now I think he can knock the eight into a break shot. And it looks like he's a little bit off angle, a little bit on the bad angle of that, I think. You mean on the 15 and just yeah. boom? Shoot yeah, shoot the 15. It's, you got nothing to lose. You you got position on the 12. I would do that. But that's why I'm sitting here. I think looking at the overhead, I don't know if the, I think he's the, the angle, he may be going the opposite way. If he could move the 13, though, like Danny had talked about, he could shoot the six and bump the seven into position or shoot the seven and bump the six into position. So what you're saying, he doesn't have an angle on the 15 to nudge the eight towards the pile. I don't think so. I think it's going either dead straight or it's going a little bit away from it. Even cheat in the pocket? Yeah. I don't know. I'd like to see him do it, though, if it was available. So would I, but he's not. He cheated the pocket to go to that that route, but he hit it at a lighter speed, so that may have helped him. Well, I think he's going to shoot the one and try to nudge the seven, knock the six into a break shot. Yeah, and I really like the angle that the seven's laying on the six. It doesn't take much. It's laying perfect just to move it right into position. And then later Very on... Very lightly. Yeah, real lightly. And later on, he has the eight. Later on, he has the eight to play perfect position on the break. Did he get there? No, nope. he didn't knock the six out. Well, then he's got a few issues then. I don't think he has an angle to go into the six now, does he? Nope. And he didn't get the angle on the seven to knock the seven out, the six out. Well, does one, he have an angle to hit the six? No. Nope. I think he's all right with the six is what he's thinking and what he's saying to oh, himself. Oh, that's awful close to the pile or maybe even in. No, it's a little bit outside the line, and the line gives you a lot more room for error than you think because you have to consider the width of the rack. So That's a tricky shot when you're that close to the pile with the break. Yeah, you don't get near as much uh, movement. Oh, my goodness. You get Miscue. Score 67 well, you got to 103. I didn't like a few things he did there, but he didn't have to miss Q either. Yeah, that's something you really can't uh, anticipate happening. And occasionally, I can tell you uh, from personal preference uh, or personal experience, excuse me, uh, oh, wow, look at this cue ball. <laughs> Not good. It'll be a little better, that's for sure. But from personal experience, uh, I've had miscues that weren't my fault, and I've had miscues that were my fault. Doesn't it come like a shock <laughs> when you're shooting all of a sudden? Pew, I know, it's yeah. It's like a shock. I'll tell you what, though. When I'm struggling, it doesn't near as much as whenever I'm playing well. When I'm playing well, it's usually not my fault much, and that's not going to go. Oh, boy. We've seen that 12 ball hang plenty of balls. I mean, that pocket hang plenty of balls. Now, he can play either one for a break shot. The only reason I say that is just a little easier to get position on the break on the 12 than it is uh, get position on the Yeah, end. I don't consider that a break. Well, I understand. Look at but, this speed. Wow, what a shot. But you, I'm sure you've had to shoot a break shot from of there course, before. But the problem there is you hit the side of the pile and you, you can lose scratch the up the corner yeah. or get far away. 
or let up on it and catch the bottom of that corner ball coming across and scratch in the lower corner. So, and ladies and gentlemen, we're on a player timeout. Uh, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back from a player timeout. Darren Appleton at the table with a 104 to 50 lead. This is both the players' first straight bowl match. Um, seen a couple uncharacteristic mistakes. Uh, one one easy break break ball that was missed by Darren, and then a couple mistakes by by Shane. But overall, Darren's played pretty solid. He's got a hell of a stretch here, though, Danny. And you remember what happened just a few shots ago when he miscued using the bridge. Yeah, don't do it again. No, and I bet that doesn't happen very often uh, just because, I mean, the miscue, of course, but even with the bridge, you're l usually a little more careful. And he's like a genius with the bridge anyways, so. Well, he's got that shot. He's going to draw the ball. He's going to go all the way back. Uh, with the bridge after the last miscue. This is the break shot I try to stay away from when the, it's real close to the rack. You just don't get much into the rack without just getting out of hand, hitting it. I think he's just going to try and draw back to the center of the table and see what happens. I hope so. Oh. Oh, he went all the way back again. Yeah, he hasn't seemed to realize that. Uh, Look it. Wow. He didn't have to walk. That's the good part. Well, the age's sitting pretty good. You know, this is in that zone where it's tough to miss. Eh, well, it's not easy, though. And as No, a, but he's got position. That's the good part about it. Right. It you doesn't, don't have to play position. Make the 8. You're going to the 11. I like Jersey Red used to always tell me, if that cue ball's not frozen, you can go ahead and freeze it. That's how close it is to that rail, and we know how tough that is to shoot off of. He went rail first. Oh, no, he didn't. Look like when the cue ball was coming down at it, like he was going to try and go rail first. Great shot. What do you do now? You go one rail to the uh, seven? A 15? Uh, you mean the 15? The 15? Uh, oh, one, one by the, the three. Spot. That's oh, the three. The three. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, he can get on the three for sure. He would love to get on the 15 if it went just because... I think it goes. Okay, if the 15 goes, that's the one he really wants to get on, that's for sure. And he did that. Yeah, he wants it to go a little more because I think he's got like half a pocket or maybe not in, an entire pocket. No, I think he's, well, from here it looks like he's got just about a full pocket. Okay, and if he can bounce off the rail, not too, too far, but not too, too little. He needs to bounce a little bit. He, he doesn't want to get too thin on the three because I think he does want to go into the rack a little bit when he shoots the three. First things first, though. Don't take your eye off this 15. Okay, and that's, that's pretty ideal. Yeah, I think he can hit the five. Yeah, and the one good thing about also hitting the five is he can't get enough of it to where he's going to stick or anything, so he's just going to get a piece of it. So unless the cue ball runs off the five to the back rail and back and sticks him in the pack, he should escape with the cue ball. The two is going to hit the pile. Uh, don't hit it super thin on the five and let the cue ball still race. Oh, he caught a lot of the five, and that's the one I was a little worried about. He got a nice friendly kiss on the ten coming back, though. Now here, Danny, you're in a little bit of a funny spot. You can't quite get up on that 12 to get an easy break shot, so you just rip through the rack, right? Right. You, the cue ball won't go anywhere. Yeah, nice shot. Nice shot, and he really did it all with that shot right there. Now he's just got to think about that 14 that dribbled up to the to the top rail. Well, he's got the 12 up the, up the far rail. Do you go to the 14 now, one rail? Well, I think he's going to roll the one in and deal with the five and two and get to the 14 there. Good shot. Yeah. He could do it now, come a one rail over if he wanted. I think he'll go ahead and pick the five off and then draw back to the position on the two. I don't see any future and any reason well, to leave you, the five you know, there. You could leave the 14 there for a while because that ball will get you to the break shot pretty easily. Yeah, but he's been so good around the group. I really, I really would like to see him go ahead and go get it and come back down. He's just been so, he's managed so well so far. 
but definitely an option. But being almost dead in the middle of the end rail, I mean, he's got to get down there to get a decent shot at it. Well, if he goes forward a little, he can get there w with, the, with five. the five, yeah. And you'll notice he's leaving the four, seven, and 13 there because if he can get on this 14 ball, now he'll go forward and pick one of those off actually to get on the 14, but you'll notice he'll get try and get real full on the four later on to where he can drop on either the seven and 13. I guess it would have to be the 13 that's gonna be left there to get on the break shot. I think, anyways. He's got an angle on the seven to go to the fourteen right now. And I like I like him doing that actually. Got a perfect angle. Just don't get straight. Can't afford straight. Get what? Straight in. Can't <laughs> afford straight. He got pretty straight, got an angle. His stroke, he'll go into that rail. Yeah, he, and he can just, I like him just punching straight down at the four instead of coming two rails, unless he plays for the 13. Huh. Good shot. He wants that to go a little more, that's for sure. Well, can you shoot the 12 and hold it? For the 13 and yeah. then use the 4 as a break? Yeah. That's okay by me. It's a little off angle maybe, though. Maybe it's a little off angle. It looks like to me he's trying to keep the 12 as the break ball. Main thing here for him on the 4. Oh, he did a great job here. Now he's got another natural 2 rail angle to come just gliding by on the left side of the 12. Doesn't want to get too thin, though, so he'll want to get kind of equal, like where they kind of are straight up and down with each other. Pretty good. Yeah, great. Would you say Darren's played more to how you would like to play it uh, than the, well, the, the four exactly, we've seen? Not exactly, but we got different styles. But, you know, he pockets so well. He don't have to play it real finesseful. You know, he can overcome. Like that one ball he shot way down there. I'd probably hit the rail. <laughs> that would probably still went in, though. And again, I, I, he, I don't think this is the follow one. Wow, he really put a lot of pound on that one. Played position for the three. Yeah, that may be it, Danny. It, it is it. Now he just needs to come one rail right in between the 14 and 11, I think, knowing that uh, knowing if, as long as he gets past the 11, he always has the 11, and everything else he'll get better shape, uh, like either fall on the 2, either fall on the 4, the 13. I don't try to spin this. I just level out and come straight down the table. Good idea. He could have put a little left and try and get on the 14, but, yeah, that's the path I like, knowing that, that you're trying to get on the low balls, but you always got the 11 if you overrun or underrun. That's what he's got. He's got the 11. But where do you go to shoot the two? He's going to hold his ball in this, okay, these bottom good ones. Shot. Good I shot. think he's going to come into these, uh, the 15, 8, too. You'll notice the stack's not real solid, so they should spread pretty decently here. Just split the 15-8, like so. He's got the 8, and he can nudge the 7 now. Maybe knock the 10 out a little bit. Yeah, these are a little funny, though. I, I, if, I, if I could, I might just shoot the 7 here instead. I think the 8's pretty open. I think if he's decent on the 7 here, he could do a lot just maybe bumping the 1 just as he goes by. The reason why I say that, you'll notice the 11, 9, 6, and all that. So he's he, he's got, he, he doesn't need multiple clusters right here by, uh, like, trying to reopen a bunch of stuff. Well, he's got the 10 because he just made a break shot. With the 5? Yeah, but now he's going to have to shoot the 10 
He could shoot the five if he's afraid of the ten. Well, the ten's real th a little thin and a stretch. Well, he'll have to use the... The bridge? The, the Miss Q bridge again. Well, one thing I like about him passing on the ten is he's playing well. So he's probably going to produce again uh, as far as the break shot. Like, even if he holds on the eight right now and just bumps the ten over into position, then he'll have the one on the side. Yeah, but I don't think he got the angle on the eight. Maybe he did. Might have to shoot the eight through the right side of the pocket, but that that's playable. No. Tell you what he could do. He could go over into the nine and then balls right now. Like that, and have the 14, definitely, and then he'll break for the six. He'll have the six. Yeah, he's in good shape now. He's in great shape. I like the way he's playing, I'll tell you that. He could peel this 11 off if he wanted. No, I wouldn't shoot the 11 with a gun on my head. Yeah, not only that, really, for the side pocket, later on, the 11's a nice uh, key ball to get on your break ball. I like him getting the 15. It's just kind of lonely and doing nothing over there. And there is a plan here for him, but also when you got four balls like that and they're opened up enough and they're close, you're going to have a lot of choices, right, Danny, going over? Yeah, he's got no problem here whatsoever. You know, he's not going to miss for sure. He could come up above the 14, get somewhat straight, and roll the 14 in the corner, shoot, and then the 11 in the side, and then hold for the 9 to get on the 6. That's one way. I kind of prefer not leaving the 9 last. You're just playing it... pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Oh, he got the ball on the side. Could he roll the nine in? Shoot the fourteen in the side? That's good. Yeah. He nine, could even fourteen. Yeah. He could even bump the six a hair and hold right there a little better. And still keep the six in a nice place, even maybe a little nicer for the for the rack. Well, where the fifteen is, you don't need to worry about making the six better because the 15 will get you all the angle you want. Is he going to draw into it here? Yeah, push it. That way he can get at the 9. He's pushed 11 in a perfect spot to fall on the 6. Right here, just make sure you don't get a bunch of angle on the 11. After he shoots this 9 ball, just... And as Danny says, don't miss. That's the first thing, actually. And Exactly. And just don't get thin one way or another on the 11 like he just did. No, he's okay. He's okay. Okay, yeah, he can float it. He can it float it in with a little spin and hold. Look at the mine. He's got a little speed. speed. He don't need any spin. Just go to the rail and stop soft. there. Right. Okay. Just roll it in softly. You're going to be near the rail. You'll have perfect angle. Get it? Yeah. Perfect. Put a little inside English to kill the cue ball. And 132 to 50. It's been a long time since Shane's got to shoot. And it was from a little bit of a poor position shot after a, a miss by Darren. And really, uh, I understand the miss that Shane had just because of where he had to shoot it from, way off the end rail, if you can remember. And now Darren just needing a, needing a rack and, and four more, 18 total. Well, he's going to splatter these. He's not rolling this in. Now this, he's whacking it. Yeah, this is the angle you can put that nice high ball and go through him. And he still glanced a little bit. Did pretty well, though. Yeah, they're all open pretty well. Now he needs one more break shot to get a few more balls. Next rack. And you drop down for the 2 and the 12, right? Right. No reason to wait on those. 
you're not going to have any problem really opening those four that are inside the rack. You'll notice the once he peels the two off, he'll come back around on the one three, and he's got the eight to open the rack. He may even have the ten. I'm not sure yet. Well, he got pretty full on the three, on the two. Uh, he Can didn't he want go to go two rails yeah, to, to the or eleven pun or punch up. Yeah. Well, he got to the nine up the corner. I don't know if that's good. Yeah, but he's got the three. He'll just roll in and hit this rail, getting a little bit of angle on the eight to where he can go into the balls and have the five as a insurance. Insurance. Yeah. See how much insurance enters with straight pull? Oh, absolutely. Well, that's just like any time you're, even nine ball, when you're breaking balls out, you don't want to do it on the on the ball before, right? You want to do it earlier in the rack, so. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe that. He wow. once stroked it. He just pulled back and shot it. Well, now he's got to sweat. Van Boeing doing something great. Yeah, we're going to get a timeout by yeah. Shane now. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back off a of player timeout and a real unexpected miss by Darren after a nice run. But, folks, did you see what Darren did? He pulled back and shot. No no practice strokes. And that's what lines you up better. So don't do that one-stroke stuff. And, uh, Shane watched, uh, oh, watched the cue ball. Oof. Oh, never a doubt. Well, Shane, uh, Shane watched the same thing we did for about a 45-minute run. Uh, I bet he didn't think there was any chance he was getting back to the table with Darren only needing 13. Especially that shot. Yeah. Where are you going? He's okay. He's got a shot on the 10. The one looks like a good break shot. Uh-oh. Where are you going? Yeah, and he's got an off angle on everything now. He's got a little tester on the 11. A definite... Well, Shane has not had a great tournament here, eight ball and straight pull, you know. But I could understand that, you know. He's had so many final matches that meant a lot of pressure that he's not, you know, he's not really determined, I don't think. Well, I think he uh, kind of stays determined, but I think he just shows that he's human, you know. You just can't always bring your best. Yeah, that's not good, being a human. <laughs> He's a great player. Oh, yeah. But I don't think he's had his best tournament right now. And I think he would tell you the same thing, Danny. Well, he can get to the 11 right now. He might even bump or the 11. Four. No, okay. Well, the one's a break shot, so he don't need to bump anything. I agree. Fall on the balls now. Now you push the 11 up closer, right? to where it's a little easier to get you, on the one? I don't think you have to do that. I don't think you have to either, but I th I laid nice, and I think it makes it a little easier to get that position on the, on the does, one ball. It does, but you got to fall on the 11 now. He's going to stay above the five here. That way he can pull two rails behind or draw straight into position on the 11. Is that a little off, a little off angle there? Can he, is he going to draw or is he going to pound at two rails? See, just to make a stupid point, without hitting that 11 now, he would only have to stick on this and he'd be there. Now he's got to play position again, which he did. Very well. Good shot. I'd have to go over and look where I wanted to get here just because you're going to be behind it. 
and it doesn't take much for behind it to become a little funny. He's good. Now 137 to 59. Needs to put a run together. If you're just joining us, as ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jeremy Jones with AccuStat Video Productions with Danny DiLiberto as our guest here, Hall of Famer. We're at the Make It Happen Straight Pole Invitational. This is our third match of day one with dual beating Shaw in the opening match. He could whack this one. Yeah, he I agree. He was going nowhere. Pretty nice. Pretty well done. Gonna Does he have a show? He's got the ball on the side. Yeah, he's got the ball on the side. He's got a little bit of an angle on it, so it's definitely missable. And he has the 15, too. I think. If he had to. Produce a shot on the 11. Good thing it didn't turn over and freeze on that nine. Things could have been a little dicey. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Looking at that two ball. Really no reason to take a chance on hitting a three ball combination that unless you're absolutely certain it's dead. I mean, he can rub the stack here with no problems. Got plenty of insurance. Yeah, go one real. You got the 10. Mm -hmm. Going it's to the 15, though, not the 2. <laughs> a lot of people make that mistake and shot. go into that outer ball, and then they run right through it and get behind everything. Well, get the 6 out of there now if you got the angle. Can you shoot the 10 and get to the 6? It's kind of straight, but, I mean, you would have to figure he could pound it one way or another. Yeah, cheat the pocket. You got to get rid of that six. That six sitting there is well, not good. He could roll the seven in and get on the nine and get on the six. Uh, he's real nice on the seven in the side. I wouldn't worry about the ten too much. I might have to look at that seven right here. The seven offers a lot of options with no problems. See, trying to produce a little better break shot, like a little bumpage on the nine. The nine's pretty good anyway. I don't think you got to bump it, but it won't hurt to do it as long as you're not losing the cue ball. Yeah, this looks a little thick to be bumping anything here, like he's going to remove it a little too far. Oh, he's playing this with outside. Uh-oh. <laughs> he's playing his uh -oh. wall. Does he have the 14 all the way up? Yeah, I, don't, I still didn't didn't understand having to come to the back of that 10. Uh, yeah, he's got the 14 all the way up, but. It was a mistake going into balls. Definitely into that one. Man, doesn't miss much, so. Gonna go across and get that five now. Yeah, I would. I the I... five is not a ball that you can get on the break shot with. And he got straight in on the six. I think just uh, keep it simple and don't overthink it too much. Shoot the ten and come. He's going to wait. He's going to go ahead and peel the six off, I'm sure. Maybe go to the five. Off the six. See where he's pointing? Well, that gets him to a lot of balls. What's this going to be? What's this going to be? Yeah, almost big trouble. Yeah.
I guess he's going to use the 4 to get to the uh, 9. Looks like he's uh, shooting the 12 and the 5, draw back on the 8 and the 4 for the 9. Is that right? I don't think there's a choice, no. Yeah. It's kind of what made me think that way. I don't really see much of any better options or really a whole lot of other options. You got to shoot the 5 and get on the 8 now. The 9's in a tricky spot. He overdid it. He sure did. Now he's gonna, now he's gonna have to have a real nice control shooting the eight. And I don't think he'll play backside. He's got to cue it and come to the end rail and back up, center of the table. Do a little bit about where the eight's at now. Be perfect. It looks like he got about there. Wow, a little straight. I think he can go forward and get a better angle on the nine. High ball, no English. You know, he don't want to draw back from there. He doesn't have a good shot on the nine. I think you got to go forward, but he doesn't. He's just pinching it, I think, and taking the cut. No, I think he better go forward. Better look at it again. That nine is a tricky break shot. Well, it seems like when the nothing's there, it's not that thin, but once you re-rack him and he's way behind it, you're like, whoa. Get it? Wow, where's he going here? Well, okay. he got good. Okay. That's what I liked. 137 to 7, 73, you can see on your screen. Darren Apple leading both these players. This is their first match. Each match means a thousand. Yeah, and each victory gets you closer to uh, that final playoff, which will be Saturday night at 9.30. We've already crowned our eight ball champion, and that's the 11th event of the Make It Happen series. That was Jason Shaw last night in a victory over Corey Duell. Okay, he's gonna, he needs to put some draw on this now if he's going to try and back it up. No doubt about it. Uh oh. Oh, he didn't. He's not going to get anything. Uh, maybe the 12. It's close. I think the 10's in the way. I don't know. He might have a bank on the one. I'm surprised he he didn't draw that ball. So he's 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 going to curve this ball, I guess. That's why he's taking the extension off, maybe. Or is he jumping it? Is he jumping it? Maybe he's jumping it. He's jumping it. Is he going to get anything else? He'll draw. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, boy. <laughs> Forget about it. He drew his wallet. He may have gotten away with it here. Yeah, I'll say it again. Shane has not been his sharp self. What's this 10-15 combination look like? And I'm not in love with it, but is it, if it, is it aimed just like perfectly straight in? The 10's kind of over the 5, but I still think he can get at it. Now, Darren, you'll see, uh, 137, he only needs 13, and there's only one gone, so he just needs this rack, all but one. But he needs a shot. Yeah, and I think if he looks at this 10-15, he may actually say to himself, it's okay. I know it looks like a, a lot of cut, but it looks to me he's just the 10, the cue ball and the 10 are just straight down the barrel at the part of the 15 you need to shoot at. That might be the only thing he's got. He doesn't have a bank. Yeah, he's elevated. You know, he could, you know, you can stiff, you can stiff the 12 in it, you know, 50% of the time, but it's an awfully tough shot. He's playing safe. Yeah, he's going to fall to the back rail here below the, uh, that needs to go a little bit, though. Good enough. Not bad. But he's going to be stuck on the 12 now, I think. Danny's talking about the 13 ball next to the 7, oh, I think. Sorry, Is that I right? Call it the tw right. Shoot yeah. the 7 straight on. Freeze him on the 13. Cross side. Cross side, he said. Yeah, he don't feel like playing safe. Well, that, and he's wondering if he can, uh, but even though it lays the best of it for him, uh, but he feels like maybe the tactical part of the game isn't what I want to try and do with Darren. 
I wouldn't doubt this goes long. I went short. And, uh, and he gave up the three, so this is going to be... Uh, so Darren played a good safe. Darren can't get at the three ball? I he, think he... Don't tell me he doesn't. He's shaking his head like he might not be. He can definitely get at the cross corner bank, and he's going to go. He is. He's banking the three or trying to. Yeah, here, draw your ball off the pack. Don't roll it. Nah, I don't like rolling it. He stiffed it, and it's not going to go. I would have drew my ball just right off the bottom of the deuce in the six. I think he could have kept a little better line on the bank that way. Can't really afford, yeah, I was about to say, I wouldn't even mess with a 13 and three. Well, you give a guy like Van Boning a lot of innings, he eventually might do something to you. And I'm really surprised he didn't hold uh, for the eight to come across and open a little bit of the pack, having the three there. Now he's shooting into the bottom of the pack. Figures to get a shot. But yeah, he's going to the eight. Brush the, the two and go to the eight. The high ball. Center. Center will do it. Good shot. shot. I don't think the 11 goes. It goes in the side, though, the opposite side. And I like that, actually. Uh, I don't mind that shot. I get a little bit of an angle on it, knock it in. Those will open nicely. You got the five there. Watch out. Oh, boy. That's why I definitely didn't like going that into those. No going, you don't go into the balls right away, well, like Jimmy Karras told you, right? Right. And not only that, you no have hurry. to be able to read him. Like, if he hits the bottom of the two right there, he's diving towards this corner pocket or the end rail. There was no great place to go into them he, for right there. He doesn't have a good safe either. No, he's got a jacked up shot on the 14. He's got a cross side bank on the 12. He may have a shot on the 11, but he's he's jacked up over it and awfully close to it. He's looking to see if this goes in the side by the five. Is that what he's looking at? I don't know about that. It's awful close to the ball. I think his best shot is the bank, the four ball. Yeah, I might have the tendency to agree. Oh, he's, is he dead straight on it? Is he shooting a combo? He's shooting a combo. Oh, he'll probably miss it. Well, not Good today. Shot. What a Good great shot. shot. Yeah. As much as uh, we gave him a little tongue lash in there, we got to commend him with, commend him with such a great shot. And, uh, and again, these, these, these top players in the world, the one thing they do as well as anybody is recover, recovery. Turn a bad situation into something positive. Got a little thin here too, Danny. Yeah. And stretched. Got to watch out for the seven here. Well, he's got a thin cut on the uh, 14 in the side too, but. This, this is closer. Okay, he can get on the one ball where it goes, and you'll notice the f four ball is a decent break shot. It's not the best, but it's decent. And when he goes into the one ball, he'll probably con contact the 12, but that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Thing is to get to it. I think he's got an angle to do it. And I don't mind him coming to get the seven, but he needs to go ahead and... I don't think... Is the 10 playable in the side, like, real easy? Okay, I don't mind leaving it. I think it. so. If the 10's playable easy in the side, I don't mind leaving it at all. But I would try to get on the one. He's going to use the... Uh, 
He's going to use the. He's going to shoot the ten and the fourteen after the seven, and then drop on the one to bump the twelve and hold the twelve to get on the break ball. And there's nothing wrong with that either. There's a couple ways you could do this. The one thing, whenever he shoots the one, he's going to have to have pretty good control going into that twelve. And Danny always been saying, just don't miss. Ooh, that wobbles. It was a little bit on the high side, wasn't it? Yep. I'll tell you what Shane's doing. He's creeping back into this match here. It was 137 yeah, well, to 50. a lot 50. of innings to do it. True. He didn't get many there for a bit, but now with a couple miss, couple misses uh, from Darren. And maybe he got to where he doesn't have to contact this at all. Well, that's ideal. Oh, perfect. That one almost trickled. But he's not left-handed. You know, a left-handed shooter right now is going to be perfect. I'll tell you one thing, though. He's a pretty tall man, so he'll be able to reach it a little better than uh, a lot of guys would. Well, the match means a thousand dollars. And he's probably with a girl that likes to eat every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's laughing. Well, it's not only worth a thousand dollars. You know that really means something to get off to a one and zero start, trying to get to that final on Saturday. Okay, so he trails by fifty right now. Got a great break shot, though. He's so close to it, too. Uh, watch the cue ball. Where are you going? He's got the five. And thank goodness he's got the five, because otherwise I'm not sure if he had anything at all. But, I don't but think it, he did. But he got a nice spread, though, overall. Yes, he did. He got a little angle on this five, too, so he's got to pay attention to it. It's not a cold-blooded hanger. No, it isn't like he can go right to the 14th. He can go to the 12, I believe. And just don't try and do a whole lot with the cue ball. Just get to your next one. There's plenty open if you just get it to another shot. Well, he's got the two. That might be it. Uh, he's got to look at the seven. And he can drop on the nine. He's got to... Oh, he can he can get by the three and shoot the seven? He sure can. Well, that's good. He could punch and try and bust these. I wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah, I think he could have waited on that. I, I think he could have waited to get on the nine to maybe draw back into him. Or just, that's, this is like being on the rail, but even worse. You know, when we talked about just stay off the rail, stay off the rail. Well, you're going to shoot some shots jacked up playing straight pool. That's just how it is, but. Don't get in a hurry to re-break, especially when you only have two uh, two balls connected with each other and there's plenty of other balls around, right, Danny? Right, exactly. That's 11.15. He's acting like his 11.15 is wired. It is. Well, he didn't hit it or that wouldn't have been wired. He's got it now. He can shoot the one as well. He doesn't even have to shoot the combo and he can open. He's already got a nice break shot on the on the 12 ball or the 13. The 12 I really like with the 6 being there and the 2 being there. He can go into like the middle ball if he gets a little bit behind the 12. This match is going to get close. I'll tell you what, these lay perfect. I would go ahead and get on that 14 just as soon as I could and come back down and do my work, finish my work. I don't see any reason to leave the 14 up there at all. Every, when everything else is available down here, that's the time to go get the lonely one up there, right, Danny? With the two. Well, I think he can draw off the 10 right now and do it also. Yeah. He could have drew that ball easily up for the 14, and I guess he's going to shoot the 8 and come across after he shoots this. Well... Oh, 11 will get him there. And then he's going to leave the 8 to get on the 2, I guess? Yeah. Okay. 11, 10, 8, 2, 6, break.
you can tell he'd like to get a little bit close to the eight. Only reason being is he, he, he is going to want to bring the cue ball back to get a little fuller on the two. Good enough. A little more full. Yeah, real good. Real good. And that's those are the type of cue balls I like leaving for the break shot rather than the ones upstairs. And again, you don't have to get straight. Just a little bit above the six is fine. Remember, you can no, all... No, he'd like to get straight on the six. Right, but I'm saying don't take a chance going past it. A little bit short of it, you can always ba bounce off the rail and you're fine. Perfect. Well, Dan Boning's at 101. I know he's ran 49 before. And he made a hell of a combination on the five ball on the side right there, that rack, when he got kind of stuck. Or was that last rack? That might have been last rack. Yeah, but we're we're on the air. You can't say hell. Oh, I'm... Oh. <laughs> 137 to 101. Darren's been sitting on that number now for a little bit. Oh, he can unload on this. The cue ball's not going anywhere. Just real flush right into that 11, huh? The second no, ball. No, four. Just totally catch the four. I think you're hitting the four. Well, I think you're definitely going to catch a lot of the four. Let's see what happens here. Hit the four. Yeah, he made most. What's he got? He made plenty. He's got the 13, maybe. Oh, he's got the 11. He does have the 11? I okay. think he's got a shot on the 10. The 3 got funny. Of course, the 6 is right there to open the 3. It kind of got on the rail over there on the point. And don't worry about moving the 3 now. You got the 6 to open the 3. You got no worries there. I think that's why he was looking at the 10 ball, because he could go into the uh, 3 a little bit with that angle. But no need to worry about there. Get some of these congested ones first. Yeah, I like shooting 11 and bringing the cue ball up for either for the 7 in the upper corner or the 13. That'll get me to the 2, where I can get across to the 9 and the 5 and the 1 with no problems. So he's going to yeah. have to dig on the cue ball a little bit here. They're all open pretty well. Get straight on the 7. That's perfect. I yeah, mean, he's even pretty out. perfect. It's pretty good because now he'll be off the rail when he shoots to seven. He's looking at the 13 in the side. But Look where the three is. Yeah, that's why I said don't worry about the three, though. You got the six there to open it. You can play the six off the three with no problems. You got the four to get to the six. So really try to get to your break ball and get rid of some of this congestion here. Not a lot, all of it, but a little bit of it. Mm. Well, he could shoot the four now and then shoot the six off the three. I totally agree with that. I don't see them balls helping you at all, and you'll see there's... There's pockets for all of them, and there's plenty of ways to get on the one, nine, and five down here below. So if you're not feeling rough about it, just knock the four in and draw over. There's not a bad angle to shoot the six from because you can use a portion of a, a small portion of the three to make the six, or you can use a big portion of the three to make the six. Well, he's got a perfect chance to do it right now with the four, but he's not. Well, he may get on it now, though, meaning get on the four to get on the six or get on the six to get on the four. He's definitely going to shoot the six off the three, though. And the funny thing is he doesn't have to murder it. Don't think you got to, like, cream it here. You could roll it in and you got it. Right, but I'm saying if he creams it, maybe something gets repositioned and tied up. So just bump, it, right. a, just bump it a little bit. You're thinking straight pool there, pal. Well... At least for this week. I don't know what's going to happen when I go home after this week, but... Wow. 
Well, he's just, playing position for the three. I still don't. I still think it. You know, we talked about it. When it makes it easier to bump a ball here and there, you do it. But maybe he was thinking he could tie something up. Yeah, maybe the 14, I guess. Yeah, that's probably why he did this. Yeah, but even if he wanted to fall on this, if he just bumps the three, how much easier is this shot? You know, if he wanted to do the same thing with the cue ball and just bump the three with the six with the same shot, how much easier is it? It's a lot easier, in my mind. I'm not five-time U.S. Open champion, and I'm, I wasn't the one invited here this week, so. <laughs> oh, yes, you are. Well, to You're play, fine, I mean. Yeah, right, me too. Okay, so he obviously likes the eight. I still kind of wish he would have taken the four away during all this. Uh, see if this makes sense to y'all. If a four would, imagine the four being gone. How easy is it to run these three and then just shoot the 14 right in the side and hold for the eight ball as the I breakout? I agree with you, pal. He should have got rid of that four. He's using the four last now. He's going to draw off the 14 down for the nine and five. So it's just all about, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of easy when you think about it. How can I do this without moving the cue ball that much? But just when you think you got it figured up here in the booth, they do something else. Well, that's true. And, and you know, it's hard to dog it from up here in the booth. You don't get too nervous. I get a little nervous still, but not too, too bad. But nothing like playing. But you know what I can't understand? Why do they call it dogging it? Dog has got plenty of heart. <laughs> Right, man's best friend, and I'm wondering really what's going on now. He must be playing for the nine now as the break shot is all I can figure. He's going to get on the eight, drop on the five, stay below the nine for the break. Right, Danny? Mm-hmm. Pretty good. Yeah. But again, if the four was gone, he could still do the same thing uh, if he had eliminated the four earlier. So, tell you what, though, he got woke up from that opportunity. Well, he got, he's got that other chance. Like I said, you don't give a guy like this many chances because he'll get in rhythm and kill you. And pretty solid shooting right there. Well, this is the break that you hit the pile with high left-hand English, and you go one rail and come out to the middle. And what Danny's saying is you're not going to catch a super, a, a, a whole bunch of the rack. You're going to catch a portion of the rack that will still allow you to keep that left English on the cue ball and get to that side rail and spin out to the middle above the rack for a lot of options. Well, when you do that, you're taking a little chance to scratch cross side. Because I've seen that happen, but this is how you hit this break. High left-hand English, you could let it go. Yeah, and you'll move plenty up in the middle of the table, most likely to get a shot on it if nothing develops near the rack. Oh, he didn't. didn't get any high on it. No, he kind of just punched the ball instead of just he trying to. He punched it. No, yeah. you got to have high on that ball. Yeah, and he well, may now have... he's got the six a mile away. I'll tell you what else he's got, though. He may have a wired ten ball, Danny. I think it is, but how do you hit it? I know. You can't hit it with the four. If no. he needs to throw it a little bit, he can certainly shoot the 13-8 off the two and catch the 15, but I don't know if he needs to throw it at all. And if he doesn't need to throw it at all, I'm not sure he can make it. It's straight in. Meaning if it's dead straight, he wants no throw on it. And to get no throw on it, you need a real square hit on the 15. So we'll see. Now, can he get the four inside the, at, the, at the edge of the eight to where it may, becomes more of a square hit on the 15, Danny? Well, I think he's looking to see. Oh, no. 
it comes down to you got to make six. Well, we already gave him that one. He's giving himself well, that one too, well, Danny. That's the throw okay. in for this young man. Oh, Does he have the pour on the side? That's oh, well, that's, that's a lot better. Yes, it is. And then he can cut the 15 into... Uh, right, that'll do a lot of damage. Right. That's what I meant when, I, you know, the six wasn't that obvious. But wait, he don't want to hit 15 on that side. Mm -hmm. It might throw and miss the 10. I think he's got no chance to make it from that side. But the thing is, he must not like it at all because he wanted to get a little straighter on the five where he could fall on the 12, I'm guessing. Can't quite get the perfect look at uh, to see if it's dead. Well, I got the perfect look What did look he say, right 12 here. ball? He's shooting the 12 from here? Yeah. Oh, he's ducking. No, he's playing the oh, 12. Oh, he's playing the 10. He's playing the 10 yeah. is what he called. Great shot. Great shot. People love it when you shoot a dead ball. I'll tell you what he did, though. He's He's got to think about a break ball. He moved him. Uh, moves. He didn't mean to. He didn't mean to move them all over the table. He probably did. He probably anticipated a few of them getting away from uh, this end of the table, but ended up a lot of them did. So. Well, he had to hit it hard because then he assured himself not throwing it. Yeah. Shooting hard wouldn't throw it. Well, I think you got to shoot the 14, the 12, the 7, and get that 5 out of there. I wouldn't leave that 5 there long. I wouldn't shoot the 5 now, though. I want to get straight on it. But you got to get rid of this 5. Oh, cue ball. Uh-oh. This no, 7 uh, doesn't pass. He's in trouble. It passes, though, I think. But that's why I would have shot the 14, 12, 3, and then the 5. You got more full on the 5, huh? So you could right. hold, hold the cue ball up a little bit. But I think the 7 goes by those balls. It does. What about, I mean, we haven't really got to th see this at all too much, but like say it comes down to where he didn't have much. And say he got to keep the 7 and the 13 in the side for a break ball. Where do you look for the side pocket break ball when the object ball is near the rack? Well, if all that stuff happened that you just said, he would have to sleep in the street. <laughs> but you, but we're trying to learn a little bit here, Danny. Like I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Just rarely you want to try and shoot for the side on a break. I know that, especially when the object ball is near the rack. But where do you look for that, like, like a half-to situation? It depends what ball you can fall on to get to the side shot. Right, but I'm saying where do you want the object ball at? Uh, uh, near well, the rack, a little bit above it, I'm assuming. Yeah, it's well, the way the, the 13 is sitting right now, if the cue mm -hmm. ball was in another foot north, that would be ideal. Right, so so maybe let the cue ball go up a little bit from right here, and that would be a decent place to shoot the break. Yeah. Now, what about the eight? Uh, do you consider the eight a break ball the no. way these are laying? No, I don't. Just too too much of a chance of scratching if you got behind it and went into the rack, maybe? Not only the scratch, the shot. Well, I'm no. saying, like, say he, saved a, say he saved a three ball for the last, the key ball to get on the eight. Got a little full on it, stayed behind it, where he could just cut the eight right in the side and go let the cue ball run right on the rack. You couldn't shoot it hard. You know, he'd need a, a, a better cut and an easier shot. A little thin on the one, but I don't think he can afford to wait on it. He could. And you know what this tells me? That he's playing for the eight. Because yeah, why wouldn't you wait on that shot? Why would you ever cut the one in when you could get position on the eight and then make the one so easy? 
Well, why not use the eight ball on the uh, 12 ball? Instead of shooting this 14, you mean? No, I mean, without planning to break them with the eight. Use the eight to fall on the right part of the 12. He's got the angle to do that eventually. I think he's looking at the uh, eight, 11, and then break on the 13. I think that's what he's looking at now. Don't get on the rail. No, and he's a little thin, so he, if he's trying to hold for the eight right now, he's gonna have to ease it in. Okay, so he's going to be shooting the, the break on the 13 from a little bit of a funny shot, if you ask me. Well, if he gets the right angle, he he shoots that in the side. It's a great break shot. Well, that's what I'm wondering. I don't think he's playing for the side. I think he's looking to play for the top side. Oh, that's too high. Yeah, he's just You're gonna, not going to do any damage there. He's just going to ease this in or maybe punch over a little yeah. bit, depending on the angle. Like, yeah. Oh, you can't shoot this hard at all. You won't hit the pile. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, even soft, you're not going to hit a whole lot of the pile, and really the cue ball might fall below any ball that shakes loose on the bottom, right? No, he'll have one on the bottom. For sure. Yeah. Is he going to catch enough of it? Yeah. Okay. But is Because he's not shooting it hard. It won't glance that much. Right, but it'll... is the cue ball going to get low enough for the cut yeah, shot on the ball? Will. Okay. it will. Plenty of break shot, and like we always say, no two racks are the same. I think he'll glance the eight. He might have the uh, five next. Yeah, the five or the nine may come out. Maybe. Can't shoot it real hard. Uh-oh. He's, He's got, got a six. six. Yeah, it's not easy, though. It's not easy. That's where I thought also he might not try and come across off that side rail, just stay on that side of the table, taking the cut on whatever that ball is on the bottom rail, that being the one. A little bit unlucky catching that second kiss, though. Right. He could have he got a shot, but he, he played it right. He hit it the right speed. Really tough hitting downward here. Could roll it in. It's a little easier shot. Huh, uh, he didn't even threaten the pocket. Yeah, and he was trying to hit it with more speed and hitting downward on the ball. That makes that shot a lot tougher, even though that one wouldn't have gone uh, even I, with I, top English. But I wouldn't have shot it that hard. I think he could have rolled it in and stayed underneath the nine. He, I know that's the nine all the he way up, have. but... Okay, Still. is Darren going to shoot the one and go into the pile? Yeah, the, with the six there, he, the he two there. 13. Yeah, the six, two, and seven there. It's hard to think he wouldn't get a shot just going into the edge of the three. You know, not the edge, but like, you know, pretty full on the three, as full as you can. Yeah, you hit the edge of the three, you could scratch in the side. Right, yeah, not, not, you know what I mean. No, he's all right. Yeah. He's all right. I don't care if you hit the 14 full. And, it, and really, uh, He'll have the two for sure. Really just needs to not miss. That's the main right. thing. He's got the two. Okay, and as, as uh, Danny alluded to just a second ago, just playing for 12 balls here. Doesn't have to produce anything further. But he does have to open the ball. I think he can shoot the two and draw the cue ball, and he'll go into the pile. He's going, well, the same kind of shot as the one. Yeah, he, got lucky. He, had the two. he got lucky that the two got kissed by the three there. The five and two got kissed by the three, or I'm not so sure he would have came away with a shot. Well, he's got the ten in the side now. He could throw the ten in the side. He's I not don't gonna think so. Well, I'm saying if the two wasn't. No, it goes. I can see right down the barrel here that he could do it for sure. But just, But he's not going to. He's got the two ball. No reason to shoot that.
What's ten, what's Kenny doing there? Well, Darren asked him, "Do I do I have enough on the table?" And he asked how many Darren, how many that uh, Shane made after the break ball, and he said he just made the break ball, so therefore he knows there's Got enough plenty. on the table. Yeah. He's eleven. Now he needs ten. Yeah, he doesn't ever have to get down table on the twelve at all. They're all right there if he if he can produce them. He had a miss, and he had a miss cue. Uh, the, the three go. Yes, it goes. Uh, I would just roll it in and play the seven up long. I wouldn't take any chances trying to come all the way back down, I don't think. All the way back out, I mean. Got a little thin on the eight. So, and maybe not. Maybe there's a little too much angle on that three ball. Yeah, I think he's going to have to go one rail somewhere. I don't think he could just roll it in. Yeah, with being stretched, that's probably the play uh, with the bridge. Good shot. Yeah, he's going to be, a, he's got the 14, though, so now he's golden. Nice yeah, shot there, too. Shape. Yeah, he's, he's in, nine more. He's in real good shape. Now you just stop there for the gap to be able to cue the five and knock it in, right? Yep. I mean, he could play short side on the four. I don't think that's necessary, though. He'll be able to open the four and 15 in a little bit when he shoots the 10. Oh, he's got an angle to go into the 10. Oh, that's just perfect then. Well, he hey. definitely wants to shoot the four. I thought he's it was kind of right. straight to where he had to shoot the four. Man, a little more shorter distance as far as the cue ball and the object ball, the distance between the two. Needs eight. They're there. And he can just pretty much stop for the five right there. It's just use the gap between the 10 and the 15 to cue the ball. Don't foul. Now just spin out above the seven here. No reason to do anything else. You know, the eight goes, everything goes from the center of the table. He made it run a long ways, huh, Danny? Yeah, but he's got the nine. And he's got the eight in the opposite side or the 10 in the lower right. Right, nine, 10. He's a, he's out. Needs six. Needs all these but the 12 upstairs. Needs five. Stick. Got the 15 in the side. No, the not the eight. A little short of perfect, but he'll just pinch his ball for the 15 in the lower right. Yeah, no problem. He could go up for the 11 with no problem either. So it's just a matter of how he wants to cue the eight. I think he'll probably hold. Okay. He went for the 11. Can't blame him. There in Appleton, just as he did in the eight ball, he won his first match in the eight ball and didn't win another one until his last match. So if he gets these three, he's going to want to go with that good start again, but do a little better uh, in the following matches. Yeah, you can't give players these this many chances. Needs two. And he can draw it back for the 15 in the corner with no problems. Just make sure as far as we're playing all ball foul, so when he leans over, don't don't involve the 12. Perfect. And Darren Appleton's gonna get on the board here. Shane Van Boning. Needs one. Shane Van Boning's going to suffer his first loss in the first match here, but he'll be back tomorrow. Uh, pretty darn good shooting by both guys. A lot of runs. Um, and, you know, overall, a uh, pretty good straight pull. I really enjoyed it, Danny DiLiberto, as once again. It was fun. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll be back here shortly. Uh, that match ran over a little bit, so we'll probably get started in about 15 or 20 minutes on the dual, dual and filler match. So stay tuned, and we'll see you soon.
The future of billiards training is here. Introducing the DigiQ, a small electronic coach that fits inside of a custom rubber housing and attaches to the butt end of any pool, snooker, or carom cue. Simply slide the DigiQ onto the butt end of your cue, push the power button, and then play the game of your choice. The DigiQ constantly monitors your stroke for inconsistencies and gives you immediate feedback by silently vibrating when it detects jab strokes, steering, body English or movement, standing up during your stroke. The DigiQ will force you to bear down on every shot. It will condition you to keep your head and body still during your follow through, leading to a lasting improvement in the consistency of your stroke. The DigiQ comes in three different modes, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Get serious about your game. This is Q Training Evolved. Can you beat the DigiQ? Introducing Lucasi Hybrid, a whole new level of performance and technology. A Q with a revolutionary X-Shock dampening system, eliminating vibration. G5 grip technology for enhanced traction and stability results in maximum Q control. Total sweet spot construction means unmatched power. And the zero flex point ferrule provides dead on accuracy, giving you the confidence you need in every shot. Lucasi Hybrid, the only Q that matters.